So, why do I want to show you guys how to install a Holosun 507 on a P320 slide? Uh, here's why. Hey everyone, today I want to show some experience of me installing the Holosun 507C onto my aftermarket P320 slide. It's supposed to be, you know, a very smooth and a no-brainer process, but I uh, found out there are certain things that I didn't know and I would like to share it so that you don't run into the same problems. All right, first thing first, safety check. T-Mag. So what I have here is a P320 um, 3.9 inch barrel with an uh, uh, carry size um, slide that is made by Army Craft. It's a very badass, awesome looking slide. I have a you know video about it, so that you can go check out. So if you can see, this is uh, a typical you know P320 aftermarket cut. Uh, it supports both loophole DPP as well as RMR slash Holosun 507 series um, screw holes. So what's odd or interesting about it is DPPs are fine, you know, perfect fit, uh, front and the back, exact, you know, snug fit. So there's no wiggle room whatsoever. So I removed that and I wanted to install a Holosun uh, uh, five, five, seven, uh, five, 507, right? 507C. Uh, but it's shorter. As you can see, there is, you know, wiggle room. So, uh, unlike uh, Killer Innovations, where they will give you a spacer kind of shim to, uh, to occupy the gap so that you have a very snug fit, uh, Army Craft or maybe other aftermarket slide as well, they don't give you any of that. And uh, they just tell you, hey, it works for RMR footprint and uh, it's as easy as, you know, put it on, put screws down and you don't any you, you, you don't need any, you know, plates or, any, uh, or anything like that. So uh, it might be true, uh, but uh, you will see people uh, on the internet argue, you know, it really, the, the, the red dot in overall, it really needs a snug fit so that it doesn't move back and forth because um, the screws, from mechanical engineering perspective, the screws, what their jobs are holding stuff down. The screw's job is not to hold stuff uh, to be uh, robust or resisting the back and forth motion because the, the the force is downward. Is it true? Does it matter? It's up to you, right? So uh, I believe Army Craft did enough testing and uh, so did the other, you know, slide, um, aftermarket slide manufacturers and everything. So you could just, uh, you know, don't use anything else. Just put the screws down and be done with it. Right. There will be a little bit of kind of gap in here. And if you don't believe that uh, theory, uh, it might be fine. And actually, from my experience, it's most likely fine. Um, uh, it shouldn't move. I have some other guns that I, after installing it, there is a little gap at the back or whatever. It didn't really lose zero or started to move as long as I put the blue Loctite and the right you know, torque to it, uh, to the screw. But, you know, if you want to have a peace of mind, here's what we're going to try today. So I started to search and look, right? Hey, there's got to be hey, some kind of a adapter plate, right? From DPP to RMR footprint and something like that. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't find a lot of options. So first one I tried was this one, the uh, CNH. Uh, or you call it the CHPWS. It's really hard to remember. So what they have is something close. So they have, uh, this is made for P320, uh, the RX series or Pro Cut series or the AXG Scorpion. So initially I thought it will work uh, because 
well, here's what the plate looks like. Uh, because it has two kind of stud for the uh, 507's front holes here. And uh, it also has this part, which according to CNH, is, it will uh, fill that gap in the front. And then, you know, all I have here are, are these two kind of horns that I can easily just file them file them off because from the from their website's pictures I was able to see that for my slide there's no holes or whatever down here but if you look at the you know XC scorpion or pro cut slides uh, they have a typical you know six hour thing where they have uh, front holes uh, front hole here uh, for whatever reason I think uh, and then for that kind of slide you can just kind of slide in and this two horns at the top will be able to you know provide a certain uh supporting kind of thing right so i i thought okay i'll, I'll just file that off and uh, potentially it can be a perfect fit right so it, it can go down like this it can just go down like this right so i uh so i so i ordered one uh, and then after receiving it, I realized that, hey, it's more than that because the six slide, uh, they also have some kind of a channel at the center of a slide, which is probably meant for, you know, more fitting or whatever reason. And uh, correspondingly, CNH also has two <coughs> studs here that are meant, so you can see they're extruding studs <clears throat> that are meant for going into those channels and be able to provide uh, a tight fit and uh, prevent this uh, plate i believe prevented from rotating or whatever so it provides a more um snug fit <clears throat> however i didn't know that right their website did not have any pictures and i could i, I couldn't find any pictures google uh, or online uh as well to show me hey at the back there are actually two two studs here so compared to the slide that, that i have is which is completely flat it definitely will not fit tight right so the learning was i should have just emailed cnh and asked them hey can you take a picture of the back and send it me uh send it to me so that i can decide whether i should buy it so instead i just took chance and then uh, here i am i'm kind of stuck with it and I believe the second problem is they mentioned that at the front uh, here, it will be able to fill all the gaps and be able to give you a snug fit. However, if you put 507 on it, if you look closely, that's actually not true. There is still a little, a little space in here. Okay. So, and depending on how you mount it or those kind of things, in theory, it could still move like this. So that's the second kind of a, you know, caveat, which means it's probably not a perfect fit for your 507. If you want, if your expectation is the same as mine, I want something like tightly fit, uh, Without the screws, it should not go anywhere. No wiggle room whatsoever. This is not your option, all right? But, you know, I don't think it's CNH's fault. And I even emailed them saying, hey, can I return this without the restocking fee? They they politely say, uh, re replied, no, unfortunately, they cannot waive the restock fee. Uh, and they recommend me to file, file the stuff off. And I told them, hey, I feel comfortable filing off those two horns, but I don't feel comfortable filing off the two studs at the back because I, I cannot guarantee, I don't have the right tools to guarantee that I, I, after filing those, those are completely flat. So that goes away. And then I keep searching and then I came across this from Springer Precision. I've actually bought a lot of stuff from them already, Springer Precision. I, I bought... Um, kind of magazine related stuff and uh, red dot plates whatsoever so and then I originally didn't even know they actually made this they call it filler plate for this purpose 
and I this time I learned. So I emailed them, hey, can you send me a picture of the back? So they did. Now look at that, the back is completely flat. Now this might be something that I'm looking for, right? And it has two complete round studs at, at, at the front, unlike the CNH one, which are kind of half, uh, if you'll remember which I don't know why, they, they must have their, their, their reason, right? So they, they cut those studs, uh, the round stuff, by half. Uh, I don't know, but they must have their own reason. So the difference is, uh, you know, here is a like complete round. And uh, first, if I put my 507 on it, the plate, the fitting between the plate and the red dot, uh, it has much, much less wiggle room here. The fitting from this plate to the slide is what's more important to me. Let's see. Very, very tight filling. There's no wiggle room whatsoever. So now we just need to wiggle it and wiggle it all the way down. So that it has a snug fit. So even the fr for the front, the fitting, I, I think the uh, the shape matches with the slider very well. I don't know whether it, it seems to me it's almost a perfect fit at the at the front. So so if I just use my hand and push down a little bit more. Yeah, now you can see that with the Springer Precision's plate uh, put all the way down, there is, you, you can't even see light coming through, so it's very, very tight fit. Uh, it's very flat and tight fit from the plate to the slide. And uh, back and forth, there is like, zero absolutely zero movement so it's a super super tight fit and i like it so now let's put the red dot on it uh, and before that i removed the uh extractor and the extractor spring and those things so that I can expose the channel here so that I know I you I'm using the right uh, length of the, of the screw because if it's too long and you go all the way in and if it is coming out let me show you if it's coming out uh, from the screw into the uh, extractor channel then you have problem you will have extracting extracting problems see here so you want to make sure like after the screw goes in uh, it's not really it's not really coming out and the, you know going into the um, extractor channel so that's why I have those things left out for now and let's put those put the red dot on Yeah, the, the plate can still go kind of left and right a little bit because there's nothing that's preventing it from doing it. But as long as you, you know, align the holes perfectly, it should be fine, right? And uh, if you look at the front, the shape is really matching with the curve of the slide, so it just, just fits perfectly. So now I'll put the red dot on, make sure it's flat at the base. All right, and now let's try to put a screw. The The left side is fine. The right side is the one that will go into the uh, uh, extractor channel. So the left side, once it stops, you know that it has hit the bottom. So, and the, the actually, the shape of the head is also very important because if you buy something from 
uh, you know, Amazon or something, you might end up with something like this. So actually, let me take one out for you. Um, yeah, if you buy something like this, the head is too, too wide and it will not uh, perfectly match with the with the screw hole on your 507 because it will be starting to touch the uh, the wall and uh, you will see problems of uh, you know sc screwing it down this <coughs> this is perfect so I actually don't remember whether it, it comes with the CH plate or it comes with the, the 50C itself anyhow I'm sure you will have the right size, so you just need to make sure you have the right length. So the thread is 640, Okay, just hand tight a little bit. Do do not over over tighten it because we are going to use the uh, at the end we're going to use the torque uh, driver. So right now, just uh, go make sure it goes all the way down, but not over tighten it. Now let's check the extractor channel, and there we go. Nothing. It's not coming out perfect. So here, I'll let you see clearly. So I, I like this light actually, it's pretty helpful. Now we should be good. So we can just put down the other one. I think that this is just the right length for my combination. Um, if I didn't have the plate, it might be too long. It might be coming out into the extractor channel. And uh, in that case, you know, just need to find um, some other solution. Here we go. Looks fine. So note, nothing is coming up. It's all still tight in the fit. And now let's put back the extractor. And the spring. And it, that's the second way that you know the the screw is coming out or, or not because if it's coming out and blocking it then this spring thing will not be able to go in that easily you know you should be able to feel there's nothing blocking it goes in freely nice and easy All right uh, just to be safe let me remove the recoil spring and the, the barrel so that the extractor is in the right place. All right, let's put the plate back on. I have this badass looking Punisher back plate. I just got it from Amazon. Looks absolutely badass. Sometimes you just have to press press a little bit further down and then you you will know where the groove is. All right. Okay, now put 
arrow back, put the recoil spring brand back, make sure the uh, the end cap did not go anywhere else, did not fly out or whatever, the, uh, the end cap. This is the uh, DPM system recoil spring. Does that work? Does that help mitigate the recoil? Uh, honestly, I don't know. But it definitely does not hurt. So for this, these after uh, market stuff, why don't I just try a DPM system one, right? Why just buy a SIG factory one? It's, it's, it's boring, right? So now, I tend to first set it to 10 inch pound, uh, 10 inch pound, and uh, you know you see different places say different things. That's the confusing part, because somebody, some place will tell you, like for example, the slide manufacturer will will give you a um, a number how how tight, uh, how much inch pound you should use to tighten it down. And the optic plate company will tell you one, and the optic company will tell you one. So it's all, it's all very confusing. So which is why I just start with ten, and then go from there. So some of them will tell you like ten, some of them will tell you twelve, some of them tell you tell you fifteen. You you decide. So now we go to 12. Actually, I feel this one is going down a little bit more, the, the right side. So let me just double check again. It's not coming out of this. No, it is. Shit. Anyhow, that was a bomber, and uh, I thought the uh, screw side, uh, the, the length was correct. And uh, however, after I tightened it down to like twelve inch pound, it really came out and started to you know get you know, pushed into the uh, uh, extractor spring. So I had to just go downstairs and the file or saw the screw shorter and then I tighten it back in and make sure it's not coming out uh, uh, into the extra channel. So uh, all that is done and I blew uh, Loctite the uh, screws and I put them in and here it is. So just wait for 24 hours and uh, it will be ready to shoot. So right now you can see uh, there, the light is not even coming c coming out at the fitting. Uh, the vertical fitting is so tight and uh, back and forth is extremely tight. Uh, if you look closer, the front material of the optic plate or the filler plate, that's what Springer Precision calls it, completely uh, fill the gap between the front uh, the slide and the uh, optic so it is uh it is you know i would use the word perfect and uh even the the shape of the curve matches really really good fits really well the back of the uh slide uh no the the, the back of the optic and the plate uh fits with the the slide perfectly and the slide comes out and is not only pushing on the, 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 the plate but it's also pushing on the optic, the, the red dot as well. So back and forth wise there's no movement whatsoever. That's what I was looking for because I want certain you know force or support uh, to give the red dot when you know during firing when the slide goes back and forth it's able to you know hold uh, hold in position and it doesn't entirely rely on the uh, screws downward force to hold uh, the object in position right and uh, somebody you know would love to use a marker to 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 mark on the uh, on the screw and the side of the the optic so that they can tell when the screws start to move and get loose uh, I didn't bother doing that and uh, you know after each session range session you can pretty much just wiggle the 
the red dot like this to see whether it's loose. And if it's still not moving at all, the chances are it's, uh, you know, the red dot is fine. So anyhow, that's what we have and a very successful installation on, uh, on the red dot and a discovery journey of, you know, what fits the best if you want a uh, plate that holds uh, your optic onto the P320 aftermarket slide with a zero wiggle room or zero space uh, gap. So yeah, that's what I have. Um, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.